second. A motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. Right. second. <laughs> so we're going to start with public forum. Is there any member of the student body here to speak uh, in front of the Senate? Here is the Senate. Get it. Dan. Uh, um, so I'm from WCPR. Um, we had one of our members went to the, uh, the subcommittee meeting and was informed that a member should come today to speak on the, the uh, AC lines in Studio B that uh, are still leaking and there's still that repair bill in limbo. Uh, more or less, just wanted to come here to speak on what I had spoken to Nielsen about. And more or less, he told me that um, that the uh, fiscal plan doesn't have a budget to pay for it and that uh, there's going to be someone paying for it in the fiscal plan. And so that's the latest update that I have from Team Nelson. All right. So if anything from that uh, stems further, we can bring it up in discussion and then have a discussion about it. Otherwise, we'll continue with the agenda. Speaker of the Senate. Um, so as we talked about last week, we're going to, now that we have enough senators and we're all full, we're going to do oversight committee um, nominations next week. But if anybody's interested in being a part of the oversight committee, according to the Constitution, by laws, read up, you can see what it's all about. Uh, we need one member from each class. So shoot myself an email, or the cabinet an email, just so we know what's going on if you're interested in being a part of the oversight committee. And then um, following some bylaw proposals next week, maybe, right? This week? Yeah, yeah that's what was just sent out. Just got sent out. So following that, we'll start handling some of the issues that we talked about during the discussion last week. Um, cabinet reports, we'll move the president. Okay, um, so president elections are coming up soon, so if anyone's thinking about that, like please get it floating in the air, and also to let people know, so we'll start advertising soon with that. Also freshman election, uh, nominations, sorry, are coming to a close this Tuesday, this Monday night, so if um, you know anyone or want to pass along to your information, maybe some freshman residents or anything, let them know. Some is this weekend. Um, at 11 o'clock, so you probably all got that from the information on your different RSOs you're involved with. And that's it. All right, we'll now move to the Vice President report. Any report in his absence? Um, chairman of the Committee on Student Interests, any report in his absence? Just a summary for it. Treasurer report, any report <coughs> in his absence? No. Secretary report. Okay, um, so going off of nominations for freshman close. So the current election committee, we met. Are you guys still good with that? Had a different meeting. Anybody want to back out? Okay, good. Um, yes. What? Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah. One. Uh, you good? Me? It's I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is your sister? He's right there. He's right there. Yeah. Are you still good for the election committee? Yeah. Sure. I got one for you right here. Right. I mean, if you want to okay. give it to somebody else, it would oh. be, like, be more convenient if it was somebody else. As long as you can be at midnight again, I'm good. Wait, that's you, you have to be. Wait, meetings at midnight? I think have to be. They have, have to be at midnight. Be. 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 Nominations come out. Yeah. So I think it's more convenient. Wait, wait, okay, let's get back together. Oh, all right. Are we all good with, with the election committee stuff? Yeah, we're good, we're good. All right. OK, so now we'll move to committee reports, um, academic affairs. Going strong, Thursdays, 5 p.m., Medical Center, 220. Um, we have an event this Wednesday called the Student Faculty Speed Mingle. It will be in Babio Center 104. There will be refreshments, and it's um, a speed dating type event for faculty where you can have candid conversations with them about stuff unrelated to the classes you've taken with them. So that's, that's my uh, committee report update. We'll now move to accountability. Um, uh, nothing to report. Just all have to do Campus life. Um, we had a meeting this past week, unfortunately, the only me and Sean, not that it was unfortunate that it was Sean, but I didn't like, know what to go. Um, and I know that in the past two weeks, Danielle has talked to Dean Nielsen about the bus stop shelter, shuttle shelter. Um, and he said something like, he liked it at first, and then the second time Danielle brought it up to him, he was like, well, maybe we shouldn't do it or something like that. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't spend the money out of the CIF and blah, blah, blah. So and find been, money uh, from other sources. But then I don't know. He wanted to come from like 1875 or something like that. Yeah. yeah so we'll look into that. And then Sean got quotes from the bowling alley for different things. Um, and I have them. So once we find out from the bowling alley what like their 
priority is, we're gonna make first. We're probably gonna bring a budget to everyone so we can start getting improvements for the bowling alley. All right, Constitution and bylaws. Um, so yes, uh, sorry about the amendment that just went out, but now you all have it. Um, and I think some of my committee members wanted to bring up discussion later. Um, we've been talking to the entertainment committee about their bylaws. Um, so we just had some questions and wanted to have a little bit of conversation about that with all of you guys. Cool. So now we'll move on to public relations. Any report in his absence? Okay, uh, speaker committee, she's not here, no report or absence. Tailgate. No report. No report. So we'll now move to um, committee on student interest, subcommittee reports, ethnic student council. Uh, just talk about them. Yeah. All right, so uh, professional societies. No report. Media board. Special Interest Committee. Uh, so we're still trying to find the an agreeable time uh, to find a, have our first meeting, but if we can't have it this week, um, I'm gonna send an email out to all the special interest RSOs so that they know um, everything they need to know for the summer. Cool. Club sports. No report. Arts and music. No report. And recreation. Um, we're gonna have a meeting on the uh, 10th. Now uh, move on to old business. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the September 22nd Second. meeting. Second. Second. <coughs> Let me open them up there. There they are. So we'll scroll, scroll through it. I hope everyone read them. If anybody has any questions about them, see any errors. <coughs> Moving the previous question to say aye. Aye. Laws opposed. All those in favor of approving the minutes for the um, September 22nd meeting, uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. We'll just get rid of that. So now we'll move to new business, um, which of course is the item. Here it is. I apologize if you guys didn't have a chance to read over it. Uh, we'll take a minute or two right now just to read through it. Just went out an email about a minute or two ago. Um, is there a conflict? Because it uh, in section, or I guess what is it? Section D, subsection one. Um, it says students with parliamentary and accrue more than three absences, absences in one semester. Um, but in section two, it says should the parliamentary fail to attend seventy five percent. We don't always have twelve meetings. No, it's. Um so I'm wondering what's the. It's different because the seventy-five percent is like after, <coughs> at the end of the semester. Like it's because this is how the um, it's written for senators too. So it's like if you're like going through the semester and like once you hit like three meetings kind of thing that you're absent from, then like stuff can be kept right enough. But if you like make it through a semester, like depending if there aren't twelve meetings, if there's less than that and it's still like seventy-five percent or something, then you can. That's that's how I interpret it. <coughs> Basically, it's a double work. It's the same way the senator's section is written. Just trying to read it. Can I grab one? Maybe. So just Maybe that's the same. Yeah. Uh, question for clarification. Um, for part two, failing to attend center for center meetings, um, does that mean that they have to like physically be here, or does it, do their excuses count at all? I'm not exactly sure. I, I literally, I 
I'm just going off of the they have Senate requirements. Zero. I think they don't have excuses. Yeah. It's like, it, I think this is just like, because you know, we don't have access to the Senate. Yeah, we don't have excused access to the Senate. We don't have excused access to the Senate. Anymore. So, anymore. So the, the, the stuff in um, in Section 1A technically yeah. also applies to Section 2. The first part to me, after the removal part of the first section, Yeah, so the, okay, the first paragraph, it's just like double stating it in two different ways. So the first paragraph is saying if they miss three meetings, excuse or no excuse, just like senators, they can be put up for impeachment. And the second paragraph is saying the same thing. If they fail to attend 75% of meetings for the semester, which is more than how many meetings, I don't know how many meetings it is, they get to be put up for impeachment again. So it's just like a double stacking. It's the same thing. It's probably written the same way for Senate. So yeah, so even if they like got like, if they had the three absences um, during the semester, <coughs> they got to four absences during the semester and then like had to be brought had an impeachment trial and like brought in front of the Senate and they got reapproved, they would still be up for impeachment, I think, again at the end so of the semester. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like even if like say they miss four and we like reinstate them, then they would still be brought up at the end of the semester because they still missed seventy five percent. Or they didn't take the seventy five percent. All those in favor of closing discussion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All those in favor of approving the amendments to our organization's bylaws? No, say aye. No, this is, we're voting now, yeah. We close the discussion. So when we close the discussion, then we go right back. If we're not discussing anymore, then we're back to voting. No, so we brought up. That's how we brought up here. Okay. So all those in favor of approving the amendments to our bylaws as written, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the motion passes. Trump, so how's it going to work with our current parliamentarian? Uh, so it's going to kick in now for the attendance requirement is retroactive beginning of the semester? Okay, so right now. No, we can't retroactive it. Well, yeah. So it's still like, if he misses, like, you know, three more from this point, or by the end of the semester, if he misses 75%. Like, because, okay. 75% from now. From today, yeah. Okay. Kristen. Um, so for faculty, he has been notified, like, officially, not just, like, spoken to. Well, he, I mean, is that, is that even our responsibility? Uh, but, well, he gets emails, so he's okay. checking out. On to Ashley. Um, yeah, I guess we'll send after this has been approved. We'll send them to making sure yeah. he's like, he gets these emails, so he saw that we are voting on it right now and we'll submit. But we'll make sure that he's aware of the new rules. And then he gave the rules to everyone else. <laughs> so um, that concludes all the items <coughs> in new business. So are we having a discussion on the yeah, if, if anybody has anything else they want to do voting on, otherwise we'll have a discussion. So, sorry, we guys want to discussion. Um, yeah, so, if, time to, oh, yeah, um, well, I, I understand that you guys talked about this before I got here. Sorry for being late. I was thankfully waiting for food that never came. Um, <laughs> that's one of the worst feelings ever. Um, so I, I talked to Dean about it. Um, I, I misspoke last week. Uh, as he corrected me, they, we, we, yeah, we haven't been charged for anything yet, but the way it's going to work is they want to charge WCPR because the way he explained it to me, it's a similar situation to SIP TV. Um, what needs to be fixed is stuff with the HVAC downstairs, and they basically only need that for WCPR. It's not like an upkeep, upkeep of Jacoby. Um, so it's basically like we should somehow be paying for it. But like they haven't charged us because we haven't approved anything yet. So it's up to you guys if you want to. Prove it out of the CIF, the SAF, or well, it's up to the staff actually wants the CIF. 
or SAF um, to lot WCPR. Now, if I can ask a question for clarification, um, what what do you when he says just like city TV, what the, what type of repairs have we paid for in the past for city TV? Uh, for this to be uh, compared to, well, they, it's they actually have current repairs. Current repairs. Current repairs. Yeah, well, we we allotted money. I want to say what was it last semester? Um, but a couple semesters. A couple yeah. semesters ago, that that's just been sitting around. Um, and it's basically like they only need the repairs uh, to the air conditioning to run the studio. Like it affects nothing else in Humphrey, but like it's, it's basically solely for their organization. This is how it's explained to me. I'm Does I'm anybody else have any more discussion? I don't want to take time from people. I personally would just like to um, get it over with and just pay for it. Seven hundred dollars for the SAF is spending. Or I'm very budget, but it's like. I'm gonna give some. But oh. right, I just want to remind you guys, um, if you remember, three meetings ago, we actually just tabled w WCPR's yeah. request, so it's still okay. technically on the table. So I moved to take it from well, the table. I, well, we're in discussion. We're still in. Well, we're in discussion, so technically we've already passed that, but we can go back to it. Yeah, it's not bring the motion. I uh, though, I mean, I'm not supposed to do stuff like this, but I think it's a little ridiculous that he's gonna. His argument is that upkeep of a building's air conditioning system is dependent only for the function of the organization. Um, regardless of who uses the space on this campus, it's their public space for use. So I personally don't think it's the responsibility of the Student Government Association or the SAF or the CLC for us to spend money on something like that. I really do think it should come out of some sort of facilities budget. I mean, it's a space that they allow students to occupy. So it really becomes a health hazard if they choose not to manage that. First, Mike? I am in 100% agreement with Barry on this. I have the same exact opinion about it. Uh, <coughs> I, neither, I neither agree nor disagree, but I just, um, the only thing I'm worried about is that we don't have any, I don't think we have any means of like forcing, um, like, I don't know, whoever, a physical plant to pay for it. And I think WCPR has already been charged for it, right? Uh, I, we have not seen any formal charge. Oh, okay, good. That, that, never mind. I thought, I thought Hello? it was um, I, Yeah, I agree with you. I think it might set a bad precedent, like they're comparing it to uh, something that we did in the past. <coughs> and carry that on. Maybe it might be similar. Kristen. I just had a question uh, for you, actually. Are, are the repairs all finished? Like, it, uh, <laughs> Well, they are all finished, but actually, it's still leaking. Um, can I, if I can just have a quick second, sure. what the, the repair guy did basically was slap um, some aluminum foil around the pipe <coughs> and called it a day. And is charging $1,700 for literally slapping aluminum foil on, on And this $1,700 isn't for any additional repairs? Not, not as far as I'm concerned. I, I only found out about this bill through Matt Corrado, who Dean Nielsen casually brought up in conversation to him back in the summer. So I've never actually seen the repair bill. I've never seen what it outlines. But from what, as far as I can see, all he did was take out tiles, pop uh, aluminum foil on the pipes, put in new, or maybe it might not even have been him, put in new tiles, and he even left the, the place a mess. It was a uh, physical plant that had to come in and back and clean up everything. Okay. I, um, I would feel totally uncomfortable paying for this without having seen like a bill that actually outlines what they did and in detail, because I don't want to pay for something that's it's going to be just like slapping on some aluminum, and I don't think anyone else on campus should be paying for that other than, like, I don't know, well, the students shouldn't be paying for it, is what I'm saying. <coughs> Too fancy. Yeah, sorry. Too fancy. Um, um, so, what I would recommend is, I, I mean, since it's already on the table, you could just leave it on the table. Um, I'll, I'll go into OSL and I'll either try to get an invoice or something more specific. Um, if WCPR hasn't been charged yet, I don't see anything extremely urgent. Um, I think, I think we should just take the time to figure out a little more clear what's going on. Yeah. If there's going to be somebody paying $1,700, can we call them back and tell them that they did a really not fantastic job and ask them to redo whatever they tried to do? Um, if I may, I'll see if I understand. So um, the, the, the thing that I guess hurts us the most as WCPR is that we weren't even consulted about someone coming in and repairing it. We were only at something that would would be physical plant. So 
that we, one day this guy comes in and starts fixing it, and then we, we assumed that it was coming at this point, and it was a surprise to us that we got called out and said, hey, where's the money for this bill? And we're nervous to say it wasn't finished because we don't want this $1,700 bill to turn into a, like, $3,000. Because my assumptions would be that the, the, the person who returned this first time would be the same person to come back. And I, I we're, we're just, on WCPR is nervous that it can escalate to something further. We'd rather just push it behind us and maybe even take care of ourselves. Krista? Um, I would just like to express that if we're going to talk to the students about it, tell them that the Senate is not behind paying for it and that we don't believe the students should be paying for this at all because the student activities fee is for events on campus not to fix things that campus should already be fixing. So if we're going to speak to them, we should just emphasize that to them. I, hope, I mean, I can just tell you what they're going to come back with. I mean, they'll say yes with the SEF board, but they'll, they'll say this is what the CIF is for. The campus improvement fund is for fixing things, it's for upkeep, like, it's not with the JAC board, like, that's kind of what that was. So, I mean, like, it's considered student space. So, did WCPI request the maintenance work, or did they just do it? Through fiscal plan for approximately three months or so, we, we, we kept buying work orders saying it was leaking and all they did was replace a new tile. Oh. And so we, we said, of course, once the mold grew back, that, hey, it's not fixed, and we kept filing work orders. And eventually one day, someone not from fiscal plan came in without any consultation from us. And like, it was genuinely a surprise to us. Like, we were just a little strange why someone came in, and then we thought it was just fiscal plan and contract to someone to take care of it. Yeah. But Yeah, so I mean, it seems that if, like, they can't just impose a cost on us without any sort of input from us as far as like looking into how we're gonna pay for it ourselves, looking into what sort of avenues we're gonna go about fixing it. So because I feel uncomfortable paying for something that we've had no input in, then I say we do exactly what Kristen said, and, and even if they come back with that, it doesn't matter because we just won't pay for it. So like, so they can respond in whatever way they want. Matt? As long as we're not screwing over C WCPR or something. I mean, I just want to clarify. WCPR might be a separate organization on campus, but they exist under the SGA bubble. Right. So they're not going to get, like, any bill they get is our bill anyway. So it's not that they're going to, I mean, I, it's a really good concern, I agree, but they're, if they get another bill for another $1,700, it's still our bill anyway. So this, the position we take on the issue is their position on it. They don't have a choice. So they have to agree what we decide on after this discussion. So it's not a big concern, really about them getting messed up. It'll be something that will always, it's our problem, so it's a problem we're gonna have to deal with. Do you tell that one? Yeah, uh, just to clarify for WCPR, um, whatever does happen, I mean, whether the Senate is upset or not, but, but it, it won't come out of your operating budget. Like, we'll make sure that doesn't happen. So you guys won't get screwed over anything. Thank you. Yes. So, any more discussion with Matt? So what's gonna happen in the next week in the meantime? Uh, like, we tabled it, so something can happen, but so you're gonna, you're gonna try to get yeah, I'm gonna try and get a thing. I, I, what I'm pretty sure is that the 1700 is an estimate. Like you said, no account's been charged. I, I, the impression I'm under is that 1700 includes more work and the work won't be done until they pay for it. So we'll figure out if that's how things are and if that's how they are, then either approve it and get the, everything fixed up or not approve it and then just leave it how it is. But obviously, if they're having leaking pipes and molding problems, we need to fix them. We also be meeting with, I guess, was it Nielsen? Mm -hmm. About finding other ways to pay for it. Because if we're, if we're going to vote no anyway, when, it, when the time comes, then we should be looking now into who will be paying. Well, so does somebody, anybody? I think there's still the issue of if he expects us to pay for the work to begin with, we should have had some sort of approval and the authorization of the work, whether it's been WCPR or ourselves in a vote to pay for it. So outside the fact that he's trying to get someone to pay for it, I mean, it should never be our responsibility to do that. He's the one who contracted the work. He's the one who ordered it and stuff, so. Tyler. Yeah, and also I would strongly recommend that you, um, if, this, if this is the Senate's position on it, that you um, make sure Dean Nielsen knows about this before it happens again with CTV. Because he's, um, there are repairs that are happening in the studio that he's getting quotes on. So you wouldn't want a mysterious, this, this wouldn't be $1,700 Nelson told me that it would range between 12 and 14K to just randomly appear on the SGA's bill. Uh, 
Anybody else on this item? Any discussion? <coughs> Anybody else on this item of discussion? Okay. Sarah. Where were the bumper cars? We kept that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, Kristen. Uh, I was told by Anthony and Mark, I asked the same question because I was really excited about it. Uh, I was told that they couldn't get 6th Street lot closed down because there's a lot of alumni stuff going down. What's going on? Uh, so they couldn't get the lot closed down so they couldn't have that. So $15,000 I can do. Oh, okay, so they didn't spend it elsewhere. No, uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, I would, I would be so sure about that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so a, little, a little bit more than we expected, maybe. I don't know. We'll go with Sending out a Google Doc or something to uh, fill out sizes for the polos. So faster you guys get those in to me with your correct sizes, faster we'll get them. Um, I'll see Tom and Owen. All right, um, this isn't really treasure related, maybe it's kind of is, but uh, I don't know how many of you guys read the stoop, and I put a little letter to the editor in uh, in regards to the Hayden lot. I don't know if you saw, um, they started painting parking lines. Yes. Uh, we paid sixteen thousand dollars for Return to Glory last year uh, out of the CIF, as Sarah knows. Um, and I personally think it's ridiculous. This is, this isn't me as treasurer speaking that they were trying to make it into a parking lot again after we paid for it to be paved. Um, so the suggestions I made to Vice President Murphy were uh, either refund the sixteen thousand dollars, stop making it in the parking lot, or make it an undergrad exclusive. <coughs> because we basically made that parking lot. Um, so I've actually talked to the provost about this parking lot, and um, it was kind of his call, and the total oversight committee of campus, they made this call because um, we're having faculty parking issues, mostly because of the McLean lot closure. So that lot is actually closed because, although it's hard to see from the now fenced off outside of it, the bricks on the side of Abbey are actually falling off, like slowly but surely. Yeah. Some people might have noticed it, yeah. yeah. So that's actually a big health and safety issue for the campus in the entirety. So that's why that lot was closed and fenced off as like properly as it was compared to normal at the school when things get fenced off. <laughs> so um, this is kind of like the shortest term fix they could think of in order to figure out how they're gonna handle the whole Babio thing because it's more than just a, we'll just go back up there and put the bricks back. You know, They really have to look into what's going on in case it's a, a bigger issue. So I didn't go into any further detail with it because it kind of came up in like casual conversation between two of us and I wasn't gonna try to investigate. But, so that's kind of what happened. That's why they closed the plane lot. But now I agree, he kind of made it seem like in the short conversation I had with him about it is that this is gonna be a long-term thing. As in, once I open the plane lot, this will probably stay a parking lot. And they do own the property, it's there, so they can make that call. But going further, we'd probably look in the ways to get our money back, I'd imagine. Yeah. So as of right now, it's gonna be a fact well, for the, at least until the McLean lot gets fixed, until they can open that up again. So, like, you just told me in passing, so I don't have any documentation for it. That's just what you told me. I'm just passing that first time. First so, for the foreseeable future, do you think that we're going to have events there? Do you think we'll be able to have events there? Well, I mean, faculty parking lots aren't supposed to be parked in overnight anyway, so everything after 5 p.m. Yeah, but still, they happen at like yeah. 1, 2, 3. I mean, it's worth a discussion. Danielle? I'll see what that's like. So just listening into this discussion, it seems like there are some issues with communication with the administration. Um, we do have a student member, well, an alumnus who is currently seated on the board of trustees. Uh, it's Owen currently uh, for any issues student-wise dealing with the administration of the school. Yeah, Owen was actually previous speaker of the Senate. So. But uh, this was actually a decision that I don't think the board was included on because it's considered operational. So they might not have been in discussion with anyway. Any more discussion questions? Any items at all? All right, so other than those two, the W C starting the parking lot, anything else people would like to discuss while we're here? Matt. Okay. All right. That's the end of the meeting. Got a motor on it? All right. You guys are all back in. All those in favor of closing today's meeting. Aye. Aye. All those opposed. All right. <laughs>